Hello brothers and sisters, my name is Matthew D. Ward and today I wanted to go into the epistle of James in chapter 3 where he talks about taming the tongue. So just to give a little bit, bit of background, James the Just was considered to be the brother of Jesus. He spoke a very practical way of living the Christian life in the epistle of James and uh, he speaks to us in chapter 3 about how we can take control of our own speech and how to speak as a Christian speaks. So I'm going to read chapter 3 to you. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire! And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed, and has been tamed, by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brother, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace." So what is James telling us here? Well, first, not everyone is made to be a teacher. <laughs> uh, they come under greater scrutiny for swaying the mindset of the population for both better or for worse. Um, in modern times, even definitions of terms have become very critical. Not everyone is in agreement with terms and definitions. They mean different things to different people. Uh, some, t some teachers do not speak with the voice of God, but with the voice of themselves. Um, some speakers of truth are only speaking their version of truth when they haven't asked God to grant them the permission to say what they should say. Men stumble in what they say all the time. Many contradictions are brought forth when people see our actions in hypocritical distinguishment from our words. For instance, working in a restaurant, it's interesting to see the Sunday crowd treating the employees with extreme severity for not rushing their food out in a proper time when hundreds of people come through. Is that the actions of a Christian or of self? From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. And this concept is antithetical to praising God, because something which acts in goodness cannot simultaneously be something that acts in evil. For instance, James even says, you can't have a spring bring forth both fresh and salt water, or a fig tree bear olives or grapes produce figs, because it isn't natural. Uh, we should be more intentionally focused on the blessing rather than cursing. Television shows today have modernized cursing and swearing. Profanity is on almost everything, and it has become a public acceptance to swear. Uh, this places us in a proper environment as Christians for scrutiny. Um, and our actions should be based on blessing both God and others. Uh, so how do we bless God? By, uh, by good conduct. 
Um, how do we show right speech? In 3.13, James says, By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. So we must have humility in our wisdom, bringing compassion to those who do not have good conduct. And nonviolence is very key. We cannot use jealousy or self-ambitions because it creates disorder and evil practices. If we are constantly looking in our own bowl, how can we fill the emptiness of another person's bowl? We can peer on the external condition of what they have, but we may not know how they feel about it on the inside. James says, A harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. There will be a plenitude of peaceful righteousness produced by those who are peaceable with each other. Make peaceful relations with your brothers and sisters, your neighbors, your relatives, and even with strangers. Right speech is a habit. If we continually practice wrong speech, wrong speech will be the habit of speaking with yourself and others. To change the habit of wrong speech, we must continually use right speech under the right contexts. Methods may need to be developed. Some pauses need to be made where we stop and think, what I just said wasn't right with God. The first stage in solving a problem is knowing that there is one. From there, you can learn to speak the way that God intended. Thank you all so much for joining me today and speaking about James 3 and taming the tongue and how we can speak better as Christians. I hope you all have a blessed day and night. Thank you so much.